Welcome back guys and welcome to July. We are now out of our prime selling season in Southwest Florida. And what is the theme now that June has concluded based on preliminary data that I see and things I'm witnessing on the ground? It's seller capitulation is the theme in one way or another. Now, that might not necessarily mean what you want it to mean, but there's a lot of stuff going on on the selling side of things. Real quick guys, before we start, if you haven't already and you like this content, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, helps me out immensely. Maybe check off that notification bell and we'll get right into it. Sellers are getting very receptive to the fact that 2022 pricing is probably gone. It's not coming back. Uh, there are some out there who are still, I hate to say delusional about it, uh, but you just can't, you, no matter how many numbers you show them, how much data you give, it's, it's just not gonna be good enough. What gets me about it is it's homes that were bought five, four, five, six, seven, even 10 years ago. And the opportunity to double, if not more, the money that the house which was originally purchased for is still there, guys, it's still there. As you guys know, because of inflation, the meteoric rise in housing prices, people who bought in that time frame can still double their money, maybe even more, but I'm finding that that's not acceptable for some. <laughs> double, double after four years, five years is still not enough. Um, and you know, when we show the data and what's really going on, it, it's it's met with such resistance and disbelief. I've I've have to I've had to walk away from a couple of listings, guys. I've actually started turning down listings because they're just so out in outer space that there's no way we're going to come to it's going to be a waste of my time it's going to be a waste of their time and i'm encouraging people get second opinions if you don't believe me get second opinions because not only is the reality hitting the sellers in the area but the agents know what's going on now unfortunately it is getting uglier out there in the selling space sellers who price appropriately still run the risk currently of someone who has had massive equity growth over the past three to four years and decides that, well, even though the market will pay one thing, I'm gonna price it 10% under and sell this thing right away. And I'm seeing a lot of that. I'm seeing a lot of undercutting going on in neighborhoods, especially on condos. Uh, things that are priced appropriately, all of a sudden four days later or not, because the neighbor sells for a fire sale price, because they just want out. So it's interesting to see how that's affecting the dynamics. It is making it a little difficult to assure comps and <laughs> state this is what this should sell for because it can change so drastically with one sale in the neighborhood in really under a week. And you know, sellers are also taking note of that. And it's causing them to either remove the homes from the market or what a lot are considering, and I think is a horrible idea right now, personally, just a personal opinion, is they're trying to rent them out instead. Well, I can't get what I want, I can't sell it for what I want. I'm just gonna rent it out. Uh, might wanna take a look at the current rental situation. As you guys know from my channel, it's, uh, or just looking at Zillow, it's kind of a disaster right now. Last year around this time, we had 495 active rentals in Charlotte County. We currently have, and I had to check this twice, over 1,500 because three weeks ago we had 1,100. So I said, where's, where does 400 more homes for rent come from? And now I'm finding that this is the answer because even our rental department is getting inundated with inquiries from listing agents asking, hey, listen, we can't sell this house. What, the seller wants to know what can we rent it for? And unfortunately, guys, that is the same exact scenario they're running into on the sales side. They're not liking the numbers that they're being given. You know, They're not liking that $1,500 might not get it done for some places anymore. $2,000 is unattainable for some condos. $2,500 for a three bedroom house might not be happening, not even close, and it used to be more than that. So a lot of pressure on the rental market here. Just keeps getting worse, and it's just like, when I think it's bad, it just gets worse. <laughs> but as you guys know, I've been watching this for over a year now, and I mean, I never thought we'd hit 1,500 rentals. So we do have sellers. Uh, we've almost got like a war between sellers. I don't want to say it's a rush to the exits, but it, you know, some, some parts it is looking like that. You got to be conscious of what's going on in your area because one sale can ruin your comps bad, really bad. Another trend on social media that is driving me up a wall, and maybe you have seen this, a lot of agents posting it, 
Uh, it's a mortgage rate reality check picture and everybody's sharing it. And it's basically what the mortgage rates have been historically over the past 30 years. Listen, let me tell you something, guys. As an agent, there's nothing more disingenuous than sharing that and trying to guilt and shame people into not buying at a 7.5% interest rate because they were 12, 20 years ago. Why don't we talk about what the house prices were, guys? Why don't you give me a brand new, brand new house for $120,000? Give me 18% interest. I'll take that all day. So it's, it's, I hate when they make these memes and they make these, st it, it doesn't help our reputation, it doesn't help our image at all. And quite frankly, I think it's a bunch of horse shit to try to put that on people and act like when the normal house cost two to three times your yearly income back then, that it's okay to eat the same interest rate that they did, even though now it's five to six times your income, potentially in some areas, 10 times your income. Like that's the truth in Miami, guys. So such, it's such a load of crap to me. And quite frankly, it serves nobody but yourself. It serves, like, is that your idea of marketing for the day, guys? Oh, I posted this meme on Facebook, and now, you know, I think I'm gonna get a lot of buyers off the fence. A lot of people who are, I never saw it that way. This guy's right, let me go, let me go overextend myself on a 7.5% interest rate loan that I couldn't afford, because you know what? This guy's got a point, no, it's not gonna happen. What, what do you, what is even the end, res, the hopeful end result? Like, I wanna know how many phones ring after an agent posts that, that meme. I want to know, or that graph. I would love to know how well that marketing is working out for people. Ah, uh, sometimes guys, sometimes this industry. Now, some of you guys may have heard national home sales for May have reached an all time low. That is obviously not the case here in Southwest Florida or Charlotte County. Charlotte County had one of the strongest months ever. Got some of June's preliminary numbers across the area, pulled them out from the MLS. Mostly gonna, might change a little bit here in the coming days because I pulled them so early. But off the bat, Charlotte County condos falling another 20% average price and median price year over year for the month of June, which is really rough. Condos not holding up too great here. They are still selling, but they've gotta be aggressively priced. They've gotta be properly priced. I did get my first eyes on a structural integrity reserve study. Finally got one, had a listing coming up. I gotta deal with it. And these things are thorough, man. <clears throat> these things are pretty thorough. The, it's basically like an, a home inspection for the entire condo association. I was very impressed how thorough they got with some of the items. The particular condo association that I have access to held up surprisingly well. Um, so after it found deficiencies and pointed out all these things, it also went into the reserves that are gonna be, are going to be required basically over the next 12 years to maintain these items and future items. And luckily for these residents, it looks like the shortfall was only about $2,000 a year. So how they're gonna come up with that $2,000 a year for the next 12 years, I don't know. Do they raise HOA fees? Do they do an assessment each year? But it's a far cry from some of the massive numbers I'm sure you guys are hearing somewhere else. So many residents were upset about it, but <laughs> I gotta say at, at that point, that's not too bad. And for all the gloom and doom you guys hear about Sarasota condos, it's a big focus right now, one of our major areas on the West Coast for condo sales, uh, they're holding up surprisingly well. I was very shocked at the condo numbers. So looks like for June, again, preliminary numbers. These are from the MLS, could change slightly as more sales roll in, but it's not gonna be that much. Their average sales price for condos in Sarasota County was actually up 5%. The median was up 1.4%. So even with all the concerns and the studies and the new laws, Sarasota, condo market still holding strong. Their average sales price was actually up 10% month over month and their median sales price was up 18% month over month. So from May to June, prices spiked on condos in Sarasota, 10% and 18% respectively. Not really slowing the condo market down there, uh, which is weird. And we saw that in my condo review, uh, Sarasota's condos were holding up uh, month supply wise pretty much better than anywhere else even the rest of the state they weren't seeing the same kind of supply growth that uh, a lot of the other areas i looked at were in a real head scratcher single family in sarasota actually down five percent year over year on average their average sales price down four percent year over year on their median sales price so kind of the reverse of what we'd expect to see there with all this news it's uh it's kind of crazy uh, but sarasota single family homes they have about five months supply of inventory right now, 
which to me is kind of standard for what they've had over the previous year. Uh, it's technically more in a seller's market than a buyer's market, but we'll see where it shakes out. There's 3,684 single family home listings in Sarasota. And I wanna clarify, when I say guys, buyer's market, seller's market, I'm not saying if it's a seller's market, it's the time you should sell right now. I'm not saying if it's a buyer's market, you should buy right now. All that dictates is who basically has the upper hand in the market currently due to how much supply we have. So when I say it's a buyer's market, that in no way implies we're back to 2019 prices. By now, everything's great. It just means buyers have more leverage in that market than sellers do. Currently in Sarasota, sellers have more leverage than buyers do, but very slightly, it's almost balanced out. So a lot of things going on here. We've got sellers realizing prices are not going back to 2022, making adjustments, buyers being aggressive, month's supply of inventory dropping on the whole. But I wanna use Puna Gorda here, city of Puna Gorda as an illustration on why that is in my opinion. So Puna Gorda for the month of June saw their single family average sales price drop 3% year over year. They have seven months of supply of inventory, which is strictly a buyer's market. Now, it has been much higher than that. It has been 10 months. Seven is still pretty high, but 10 is crazy, uh, just nuts. So what's bringing this down, people ask, are more people buying? Are people removing houses from the market? Well, sort of. We, we did have a strong buying season. People are taking houses off the market. Like I mentioned, it's kind of a combination of things, maybe putting them up for rent, just giving up, but we're listing less. So Puna Gorda's new listing activity, new listings to the market, for June of 2024 was down 10% from the year before. It was down 20% from the previous three months. So there's just less people listing right now. Not only are we looking at homes expiring, coming off the market, people looking to rent them out, there's just less people putting houses on the market. So that's gonna bring your months of supply down, but seven months is still very high in a buyer's market for Punta Gorda, Florida. This adds no substance to the video, guys. I just always thought this house was cool wanted to walk by it. I love when they do like non-typical Florida style. I guess this would be more Northern Florida than anything, but beautiful yard, just an amazing house. All right, guys, I'm out of sun. So that's all I got for today. If you like this video, give me a like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.